Hey there, Son of Peace. Henry here. Time for another Son of Quickie. So today we're going to go over cervical lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy and lymphadenitis are often used interchangeably. Lymphadenopathy is a broad term that refers to any abnormality of the number, size, or appearance of lymph nodes. Cervical lymphadenopathy is quite common, especially in children. There are about 50 to 150 lymph nodes in the neck region. There are over 600 in the body. The cause of lymph adenopathy is often benign. Malignancy is always a worry, however, and location like the supraclavicular region and age may raise red flags. Uh, 4% of patients 40 years of age or older will have malignancy. All right, so again, the cervical lymph nodes are divided into six segments. I will be going over these anatomical divisions in full depth in, an, in another video. All right, so for causes, there's this fancy mnemonic, Miami. That's where I'm from. So Miami stands for malignancy or metastasis. That's the M. Uh, think lymphoma, leukemia, uh, metastasis or metastasis from lung, breast, kidney, and skin cancer. The I stands for infection, which is the most common cause of cervical lymphadenopathy. Uh, anything can cause cervical lymphadenopathy, upper respiratory infections, mononucleosis, tuberculosis, dental infections, cat scratch fever, localized skin infections. All right, the A stands for autoimmune diseases. Uh, some autoimmune diseases can lead to lymphadenopathy, including systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and sarcoidosis, and sarcoidosis to name a few. All right, the M stands for miscellaneous. Uh, these, are, these can be rare causes. And I is for iatrogenic. Uh, some medications have been known to cause lymphadenopathy, like Dilantin, which is used for anti-seizures, beta blockers, and allopurinol, which is used for uh, gout and kidney stone disease. All right, so the normal lymph node is usually oval or flat, uh, usually less than 1.5 centimeters. Uh, there's various authors that have written um, criteria for abnormal lymph nodes going over size in either long axis or in axial diameter, and also number of lymph nodes and in different levels of the neck. To keep it simple, uh, oval, flat, hypoechoic, fatty hilum is present, you can see the difference between the fatty hilum or the sinus and the cortex of the lymph node and less than 1.5 centimeters. And in some areas of the neck, even smaller, about 8 millimeters or less. So abnormal lymph nodes are usually round. They're enlarged. They can be gra greater than 1.5 centimeters. They're often about 3 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 5 centimeters. Um, they're going to have a loss of the fatty, f of the fatty hilum. There could be periadenitis or inflammatory changes around the soft tissues around the lymph node, like the muscle and fat. Uh, they could be heterogeneous. They can have areas of necrosis, areas of suppuration or, or abscess formation. All right, so here we have a few examples of lymphadenopathy or cervical adenitis, also called cervical lymphadenitis also called reactive cervical lymphadenitis. This is uh, usually caused by an infection, and your body's reacting then to that infection by enlarging your lymph nodes. In the left upper corner, you can see a, in the right anterior neck, enlarged lymph node that measures 3.6 centimeters, and you can see it's compressing the jugular vein there. Not much periadenitis, no fluid collections or anything like that. On the other side, on the right upper corner, there's a transverse lymph node measuring 3.5 centimeters, you can see it's very heterogeneous. All right, you can see there's also periadenitis or inflammation of the tissues around that lymph node. Okay, here's another case. This is a this is a one year old with cheek and mandible swelling on the right side. Along the mandible, he had several lymph nodes that were enlarged. One measured there at 1.7 centimeters in long axis. You can still see the fatty hilum. With colored Doppler, there was a little bit of hyperemia. And in the bottom part, that's the buccal region. He had a lymph node on the cheek with a little bit of increased flow. In the images, you could also see the submandibular gland. Uh, the submandibular glands were normal. They weren't enlarged, and they weren't hyperemic, ruling out sialadenitis or inflammation of the, of the submandibular gland. Okay, here we have another, another baby. You see this lymph node is very round, uh, but has no internal blood flow, very heterogeneous, and there's inflammatory changes all around it, including the sternocleidomastoid muscle. All right, this, was a, this was a necrotic lymph node. These lymph nodes can uh, liquefy and lead to abscesses that may need drainage, so it's good to follow these up. All right, and this is an 18-year-old who came in with a 
palpable mass in the supraclavicular region for a few months, also had a cough for a very long time. And this is one of those cases that's a red flag. Upon scanning the supraclavicular region, you can see there's multiple enlarged lymph nodes, very heterogeneous. Uh, they had increased blood flow as well. All right, they were non-painful, which is not very specific, but usually when there's pain or tenderness in the lymph node, you're thinking lymphadenitis. When there's no pain in this enlarged and this heterogeneous here, you're thinking some type of neoplasm or malignancy. So we called the ER, asked if we can uh, do some other exams to, to further check out the patient. Uh, in the axillary region, he had lymph nodes as well. They're very round. You can see on the, you can see they're hyperemic. Uh, the largest one measured about 4.5 in, in long axis. All right, so we ended up doing other exams like a full abdomen to look for lesions. He had peri periaortic and pericaval lymph nodes. He also had a little nodule on the spleen. And then we, uh, on the abdomen ultrasound, we noticed that he had a pleural effusion, so we had to do a chest. And with the chest, we saw he had a large right pleural effusion, which had echogenic fluid within the pleura. The lung was completely consolidated with multiple nodules on it as well. There's certain out to be a Hodgkin's lymphoma with metastasis to the lung. All right, and that's pretty much it for this sonal quickie. Uh, not every lump you do on the mass on the neck is going to be uh, a lymph node. There could be, there's many congenital lesions like thyroglossoduct cysts and branchial cleft cysts, which I'm going to be going over soon. There's a long list of things you can uh, find in the neck ultrasound. So I hope you uh, found this useful. Please click subscribe, hit the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you very much. Henry out.